Hello. Uh, this is going to be, it's not there yet, it's going to be a Type 7. The Type 7 Transporter, which is bigger than the Type 6 Transporter, slightly. But unlike the Type 6 Transporter, needs a large landing pad because it's so very, very tall. <laughs> Enormously boxy. I can't, I was really struggling thinking of something positive to say about it. It's got class one hard points. So I asked a friend who is quite fond of his type seven, texted him just now, and he's still texting me back saying the splendid things about it, really positive things about how superb it is. When I initially said, tell me about your type seven, he replied saying, lovely big jumpy brick. And then a little emoji face with three hearts on. Three hearts. He likes it. Three hearts. I don't know. He uses it for a, a shielded transport vessel for his mining plunder. He had this federal dropship doing the mining, all hull plated and safe. And uh, once he'd zapped all his minerals, he docks this dropship at a convenient starport in the system. And then just texts everything where he wants to go and sell it in the T7, which you can get a decent jump range on the T7. It will, it will say that. You can get over 50 light years with all the relevant tweaks in it. But obviously, you've, you've got to remember the T7 needs a large landing pad because it's so very, very tall. <laughs> Maybe you need to go through the airlock sideways in it. I don't fly one. I, I was under the impression it was super, super hot. But Varp, who I was picking the brains of, said that um, actually you just need a few heat sinks and then you can do you can do rescue missions. Passenger rescue is entirely plausible with it. And these ships are reasonably cheap. <laughs> but yeah, he seemed to make it work, which was very impressive. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I best go. Thanks. Bye.